I joined a Roll20 game. DM said that he runs multiple games off the same group, which explains the 40 or so people in the group. Game day comes after a week or so. There are 14 people in Discord. Some with mics, some without mics, some with echo so bad the DM manually mutes them until it's their turn. One hour into the game later, we finally get past introductions. When I bring up the time, he says, don't worry, the game is slotted for seven hours. I stuck around just to see the moving train crash, only to be told I'm not fitting in 30 minutes later by one of the other players because I refuse to ERP in the Discord server. I get voted off like it's Survivor. The DM abstained from voting. The DM sends me a message saying sorry and asked if I want to join one of his other games. They say first impressions are everything, and that certainly pertains to D&D as well. And I'm gonna say that this DM definitely didn't have the most apt of first impressions. I mean, he could be a really great guy, but this, this is some next level awkward. The cast, using character names where needed. Myself playing a mountain dwarf barbarian. My friend Snaka playing a kobold artificer. The DM being the DM. A human hexblade and a tabaxi rogue, who are not really important to the story. And our problem player Mina, playing a half-elf sorcerer. It all started when a friend told me about an acquaintance who wanted to run a 5th edition campaign. Since our Cursor Strahd group had fizzled out during the pandemic, I was excited to play again. We had another campaign, but I was the DM for that. The DM for the campaign made a good impression, setting up a Discord server for the group and talking about doing a Session Zero. I had been playing 5th edition for a few years at that point, and when the DM told me that she had a few new players in the group, Hexblade and Rogue, I thought I'd play some kind of tank to give the new players their time to shine. So I made my dwarf around 150 years old and gave him a higher intelligence score at the cost of dexterity to give the newbies more roleplay options to the group than just me barbarian, me smash things. Before our session zero, we were told to make second level characters and upload our character sheets on the server. So far, so good. All the sheets were uploaded as character name dot PDF. This is where the first minor red flag came up as Mina's sheet was uploaded as Wilhelmina Tepesh. Kinda cringe, but okay. I have a few edgy characters too, so apparently it's an anime character by the way, I had to look it up. Moving on. As I don't like to metagame, I don't look at other character sheets, at least not yet. All I knew was their names. When Session Zero rolled around, I thought we'd talk about our expectations for the game, our limits, possible house rules, etc. Instead, the DM started with a kind of, what have your characters been doing before I drop the super obvious plot hook? Uh-huh, okay, let's play that out for about five minutes each, then we'll start. So her uh, Session Zero turned out to be... Session 1. Okay, not what I expected, but I played along. Before we started our little intros, the DM took some of us to a separate voice channel to talk about some character background stuff. While Snaka was away, Hexblade and Mina started flexing with their AC and spell slots, when Mina mentioned that she's playing a vampire. Since Van Richten's Guide to Ravenloft was just released, I was like, cool, with the new Dampier lineage? To which she replied, yes. After that, we all had our five minutes of introductory roleplay, and then came Mina. As we got to learn pretty fast, Mina took the folk hero background and gave herself quite the war hero backstory at level 2. During her character intro, Snaka texted me on Messenger to look at her Roll20 sheet, which was visible to all players. The first thing I saw was her anime character picture next to the sentence, she looks 13, but is actually over 100 years old. When she- oh, I hate that shit. When she later, during the plot hook, introduced her character as a half-elf, I was a bit confused, since she said, like, half an hour earlier that she was a dampier. A bit curious what the deal was. I actually started looking at her character sheet on the Discord server and, I shit you not, she actually copied the CR13 vampire features and slapped them with some restrictions on her level 2 character. Sure, she wouldn't get the spider climb and children of the night features until level 5 and regeneration until level 15, but she had the charm ability and legendary resistances right from the start. During roleplay scenes, Mira would constantly hog the spotlight, talk to all the NPCs, and if they wouldn't give her enough answers, she'd use charm person on them to make them talk 
even more. When she wasn't in the scene, she would try to force herself into the scene instead. At one point, Snaka stole a magical dagger from a rival group of adventurers and snuck away during dinner to have a look at it. Mina, trying to force herself into the scene, went, I'm not at the dinner table because I'm a vampire and I don't eat normal food. Do I, by any chance, pass you by? To which Snaka replied, I hope not. I'm uh, trying to hide from everyone. I left the group after three sessions because Mina gave me a headache. Snaka later told me that Mina wasn't just a vampire who didn't know her own age. Her character's age went from like 250 to 175 to over 500 in one session but also the head of a noble family of ancient vampires. So of course, she painted her family crest on the main sail of the ship and made it look like the party were new servants to her clan. He left after that session too. Ah yes, main character syndrome. Definitely something that we see a lot on these stories, sometimes more obvious than others. And this has a lot of interesting aspects to main character syndrome all over. First and foremost though, let's not talk about the main character syndrome, table that for a second, let's talk about the lack of session zero. Guys, you gotta have a session zero. I don't think it's like a recommended thing, I think it's a mandatory thing. You need to have a session zero to establish all of the things that OP said earlier in the post. Those are all important for having fun in d d If you don't have a session zero, you may have a rough time. You might be fine, but just don't risk it. All right, back to the spotlight hogging. I totally understand that sometimes more talkative people can accidentally steamroll over quieter players. That is completely possible and not really that guy behavior. You know, it's a mistake. It's an accident that happens, but that's not what we're seeing here. What we're seeing here is a person who wants the spotlight conscientiously. This person looks at D&D, &D, a game that's meant to be played together as a group with everyone working together as equals to build a story. They look at that and they decide no. I am the main focus, and that is just not great at all. That's a mentality that's fundamentally against what this team game is about. Props on OP and Snaka for leaving the game quickly, because I don't think this one is recovering anytime soon. I planned for this to be a whole lot shorter than it is, but after starting, I just kept thinking of more and more things that frustrated me. Note, I don't hate my DM or this game. I'm good friends with the DM. I love D&D, and in some aspects, I really do love his campaign, but it does frustrate me. To begin, the DM is one of those guys. He'll spoil threats he's made, bragging about how strong they are and how high their AC is, and how what he's told us isn't even the strongest thing he's made. The main threat of this campaign is this apocalypse, which has apparently come before and is totally ancient and super mysterious and deadly. If it's so epic, sort of makes you wonder why it constantly needs to be repeated. XP progression. I'm a level 1 druid in a party of 3. Heard about how overpowered everything was, so I cranked out my min-maxing skills and prepared the strongest yet absolute most adaptable early game build I know, the Moon Druid. For context, barring NPCs, we're a party of three, the Monk and the Ranger both being newbies. But I digress, I'm sure you've read the title, now you might be wondering, if all the threats are so strong, how are you still level 1? It's very simple really, we only get XP for killing. So we spend the entire session running away from swarms of 10 plus enemies trying to kill us, getting OP homebrew monsters quite literally dropped on our asses, they were hiding in the ceiling I guess, running from those monsters until we ran into a dead end, and then Daddy Deus Ex Machina, just Daddy for short, our resident level 20 DMPC wizard, not with the party all the time, drops in and smites the guy to shit, leaving just one within an inch of its life. By the way, zero XP. At least that's what I'd like to say. Technically, while the rest of the party was arguing over whether or not to spare the bloodthirsty monster, I kindly reminded them I don't care for DMPCs by whacking the dude with a stick. 100 XP each, and I get called a power gamer. Okay. For combat, that's the trend. All the threats are way too strong for us to face, so we have to run. When we run, we get nothing. Then, I'll kill something in a single hit and an inordinate amount of XP for doing basically nothing, and it will feel neither earned nor will it be enough to get to level 2. Role play. Okay, well, the combat's not great. What about the roleplay? I'm joining the campaign a bit late, so to work me in, I was coerced into being a guard, chasing after the party. Well, whatever. Lawful good guard. I'll lean into that for roleplay and... 
Oh god, all my NPC guard friends are instantly killed off to establish how totally dangerous this monster is. Later, I try to make a grave for my dead comrades, and the idea gets spat on by another player trying to be funny. He later just left the game. Even later, I learned that the city, my hometown, which I as a player haven't spent a single second in, is burning. Who did this? My character cries. You did. You were ordered to, the DM responds, as I solemnly change my alignment from lawful good to lawful neutral. By the way, the burning of the city was all in session one. Though my characters lived there their entire life, I never saw that city. I never met those guards. It's hard for me to be invested in any of this. Can I mention something about stakes real quick? A lot of rookie storytellers assume that the higher the stakes are, the greater the impact. The truth is, the larger the stakes are, the less we believe the storyteller will actually do it, and the less we care. I don't believe this apocalypse will occur, nor do I think our characters will die. A bunch of crap that is literally impossible for us to handle will come our way, threaten us for a session before Daddy Deus Ex Machina appears to show everyone how cool he is, and we'll be left with, check notes, Zero experience. Hell, last session the ranger got swallowed by the sandworm from Dune, and even before the DM mentioned next session would start inside its esophagus, I already didn't buy it. Okay, the gameplay. Additionally, this part isn't as frustrating for me. That's because my druid has plenty of utility options. Our poor monk, on the other hand. But anyway, did I mention our plot device, Daddy Deus Ex Machina? Funnily enough, I've also gained the job of instructing this level 20 wizard on how to do his own damn job. I tell him to cast True Seeing, note it's a 25 gold piece spell component, to see if we are being scryed upon. Lo and behold, we were. The DM layer tells me he can't believe we didn't think of that sooner. If I had a nickel for every time the DM told me this, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Fact of the matter is, often players are not as present in this world as dungeon masters are. Some stuff just doesn't occur to us. Give us some hints. Later, I had to tell him to use legend lore to uncover secrets about an object because apparently the DM made a level 20 wizard without knowing what a level 20 wizard can do. Did I mention our DM constantly brags to us about how strong this guy is? And that's why my campaign prep includes more study of the wizard spell list than the druid spell list now. Oh, and on top of that 25 gold piece thing, at some point our characters had time to kill, so we went to do some random quests from Town Hall. The quest we got to choose from paid 5 copper pieces, 48 silver pieces, 6 gold pieces, 2.5 silver pieces per kill, and 1 platinum piece. Maybe in 17 more sessions we'll be able to afford 1 extra armor class. Also, we can't ask Daddy Wizard for gold because reasons. Those reasons being, all of his gold is in the form of material components, and the currency he has, he forgot in the destroyed city. In the end, I predict it's just going to be another repeat of the experience thing. We're going to be starved for gold until Daddy Wizard serves up one gargantuan monstrosity for us on the spot with 3 million gold pieces. It's not going to feel earned, and I'll probably just feel tired. Ironically, our DM apparently doesn't want us to be murder hobos, but is literally doing everything to incentivize it. No enemies are our level, barely enough to pay rent. Luckily, our daddy wizard is paying. Wait, doesn't he not have any normal currency on him anymore? But anyway, that group of commoners over there, they have enough experience to get me to level two, and that noble has enough money to buy the entire party better gear. Why not go to town? TLDR, six sessions into the campaign, and I'm still level one. Everything is so overpowered, we literally don't even enter combat. Experience is only given through killing. The DM doesn't want us to be murderers. Quests only pay an average of 1.7 gold piece per person. The DM doesn't want us to be thieves either. Annoying level 20 wizard DM PC the DM doesn't even know the spells for, who is somehow never useful without instruction from a level 1 player character thousands of years younger than him too. The looming threat of a super, super ancient, mysterious, and dangerous, so dangerous it's happened multiple times and the world still exists, that everyone forgot about except for the library books detailing exactly what happened, where lore revelations that take entire sessions to discover give zero functional information other than to establish how ancient, mysterious, and or dangerous it is, a plot which kills everything before I can even get invested in it. All that being said, again, I do enjoy the campaign, and I appreciate the work my DM puts into it. Actually, Cap, never be afraid to say mean things. I'm going to talk to my DM about everything, or otherwise find a way to resolve the situation. Thanks for all your suggestions. I don't know if the OP ever posted the resolution of this situation, but damn it, this one does really sting. 
First and foremost, we've got a DM who clearly has some issues with telling an engaging story for the players. D&D requires buy-in, it requires engagement, and a lot of times we talk about that from the player point of view. The player needs to engage, but at the same time, the dungeon master needs to create an engaging story for them to play in. Now, how does the DM do that? That is the broader and bigger question. A big part of answering this question is communication with your players. You need to know what kind of story they want to engage in. When I was pitching Shadow over Kerakonos, I was fairly detailed. Not intensely detailed, you know, I want my players to read the campaign pitch and making it five pages is probably not going to help with that endeavor. However, I made sure that they understood what kind of game I was going to run. This DM not only isn't running an engaging game that the players are interested in, but on top of that, this DM is also just being incredibly unrewarding and has an incredibly unsatisfying and stupid DMPC too. Remember, it's important that your players not only be the center of the story, but also feel somewhat accomplished. When you never reward them, when you never give them the win, they're just not going to have a good time. D&D, a big part of D&D, is losing, but also winning and being rewarded for those victories. I feel like some DMs, just like this one, can really forget about that latter part. I've made a couple of posts here after watching Crit Crab Den of the Drake and Doge, but I'm always trying new games, and I saw this ad for a game on Discord and thought it sounded like fun. Boy, I was wrong. So to start, we sat down with the other players and had a proper session zero where we asked the questions we thought were relevant, and the DM told us some things he thought were relevant. It seemed fine, except he said, I am a world builder first, and a dungeon master second. This phrase bugged me, and I don't know why, or I didn't know why. I figured it was probably just him saying, I make the world, what you do in it is up to you. And that made sense to me. So I made a character, my level four druid centaur with the body of a deer. I was excited. The game rolls up and we start. No word of how I'm going to be introduced or when. So I wait and I wait and I wait. Meanwhile, the players are pissing around, literally. One of them was pissing around on the street, trying to get NPCs to do the same, and even pissed in some room full of wizards that were supposed to be all powerful. The party was given a job to do, stop this dragon lord by collecting 30 statues that could be turned into full dragons if they were left to the dragon lord, lest the world fall into ruin. This might sound like it would be a fun story, but I was told that the game was going to be lighter and more fun rather than serious, so my character was designed to reflect that. This was a bummer, but I could work around it. But the pissing around was bothering me. I felt like I had walked into someone's fetish. Why do I suddenly have a really bad feeling about the rest of the story of this game? I mean, come on. We're a minute in, and we're already in weird territory. Eventually, after an hour and a half, us new players were being introduced. The first player was introduced as a Goliath. The DM said the door to the tavern slams open from the sheer strength of this Goliath. The player kind of quietly said, Oh, well, I, I wouldn't slam it. I'd be very aware of my strength and, like, carefully open it. And this seemed to bother the DM, but he let it go. I was preparing to get introduced too. Was I going to go into the tavern? I was fresh from the Feywilds. Ah, uh, yeah, that would make sense. I would go to the local watering hole out of curiosity. No, I, I actually didn't seem to show up at all. Oh, okay, that's fine. Oh, oh, they're leaving. I bet they'll bump into me on the streets. I'll fall down on my dear butt and say that I'm a klutz and apologize and... Uh oh, that, that didn't happen either. Well, now I'm just confused and bored. Finally, the party hears what sounds like a horn. The forest nearby apparently was so dangerous that almost no one ever comes out of it once they go in. And finally, out I walk. The DM says this is my second time doing so. Massive improv DM mode activates, and I decide to go with it. I'm so directionally challenged, I got lost in this forest twice. The party joins up, and I have a bit ready where I say I'll lead them and go the complete wrong direction before being pointed in the right direction. But the DM says I turn around and lead them in. Oh, so it's like that. By this point, I'm getting irritated. And weird vibes. The wizards had given a plus three axe to one of the players, and after the players demanded gifts, the all powerful wizards gave them what they asked for. One player had refused to go into a shop, stopping the game for 45 minutes while the DM offered alternatives and the player was simply unwilling to do anything. Because of an in-lore reason for not wanting his NPC cannon fodder homeless person in the store? But now after an hour and a half, we were finally on the move. 
I get another bit in recounting some of the things a lowly level 4 like me had seen according to the DM. You know, giant spiders, Yanti, murders of crows, wormlings, other centaurs, and more. And suddenly I get hit for 5 hit points by some mind controlled crow. I go to get ready for combat and another player attacks with some sort of magic item, dealing 70 damage. And he said he could reload it as a bonus action and make another attack in the same turn. But this bird just exploded, making investigating it impossible. I was blown away by the damage number. I even asked, how did he do 70 damage at level 4? And that's when it came up. He wasn't level 4. He was level 6 with deliberately overpowered magic items because he had been there for so long. And it was a reward for staying in the game for so long. I was underleveled compared to him, and I had no magic items. Apparently, I was not alone in my weird feelings. Another player, the Goliath, chimed in saying he wasn't comfortable in this game and said his goodbyes. He went to leave and the DM started defending everything and putting the blame on the player for not asking questions during session zero. He completely dismissed the player's feelings and concerns, even when I chimed in that I felt like it was off too. It took nearly an hour and a half of the DM defending himself using phrases of, I'm a world builder first and a DM second, to my disgust and justifying the others having magic items and being higher level that eventually the Goliath just plain left. The session fizzled out and I left the game too, albeit privately in the call. I have never seen so many problems in one session. The DM then went on to blame the other player for the problem and wasting time. Even to me. The Goliath and I are hanging out now and he's a backup character in the game I DM. So that story was definitely weird. Not, okay, it's not the weirdest one we've ever read, but it's definitely weird in a way that's different from a lot of the stories we read on this channel. Because I have no idea where the DM is coming from when he's talking about, oh, I'm a world builder first, I'm a DM second. Because this story has almost no aspects of world building here. Like, the game opens up with the players being very dorky, very jokey with all the piss stuff. And obviously, like, if that's the kind of game and the kind of humor that you want to run, that's okay, all right? It's definitely not my sense of humor. I find it very junior high high tier, but you know, that doesn't matter. Humor and D&D &D are both very subjective. However, it then transitions into a more mature, more serious dragon plot, and then doesn't even introduce the two new players that have joined into the game. All of this culminating with a DM who clearly does not want his players to make any sort of decisions, and also has clear signs of favoritism towards quote-unquote veteran players. This is all just, it's just really rough. I'm really glad that OP and Goliath stuck together after this game though. When you survive RPG horror stories like this, it forms a bond of brotherhood that does not break easily. This was my first ever D&D &D game and I'm gonna get right into it because the characters don't matter much as nobody was notable except the murder hobo. So it all begins with me joining the Discord. There's around 8 or so players including me that were split into 2 groups and one Dungeon Master. DM wanted the game to be as good as Critical Role and probably didn't want to reject any of the applicants, and I think it was his first time as well. There was some shenanigans like some players playing in two groups so that there wasn't enough players to function as a party. The groups were split into parallel worlds that were the exact same except they were apart, effectively running one game with twice the effort. Cue the murder hobo rogue, and when I say he was a murder hobo, I mean it literally. His character looked and acted like one. Overall, big, messy beard, wild hair, with balding top and knife in hand, who was chaotic evil, and a pathological liar making up religions and rituals, and overall, being absent and unrelated to the party for most of the time as well as being the DM's favorite? Giving him one-on-one -on -one sessions where he plays alone, and apparently getting a warship too. I shit you not, I am not sure if he was joking, and I'm glad we never progressed far enough to see. The first group was fine, mine, the second group opened with the hobo burning a church and the rest of the party meeting in a tavern and being completely separated from him. We didn't meet until much later. The tavern keep wanted to hire us to find a gang of delinquents and retrieve an item of his. Then he tries to have us sign a contract. One session later, we spend the first half arguing about the contract until I convince them to sign it and just move on. Now later, we find the entire gang dead in a pile with someone on top of it, wearing the gang leader's face. One very short and very one-sided encounter later, and it is revealed that it was the murder hobo, who basically destroyed us in our first encounter and is arrested subsequently by the guards accompanying us. The next day, the guard captain visits us to talk about politics and how we could be hired. 
we go outside, and it's the murder hobo again, who somehow escaped from prison after a one-on-one -on -one session. Tensions escalate fast by smooth things over, hoping that the guy we play with can be with the party for once, saying I will keep watch over him. Thus, the group goes on a walk with the captain, with the hobo trailing behind, and me trailing further behind. The captain tries to hand one of us the bounty money, but the hobo steals the pouch and runs away. Another encounter later, ending with me blasting an alley with my breath weapon and one-shotting him. He gets pissed and said we metagamed because someone found him hiding on his turn and he didn't communicate it and I use out of character knowledge to blast him. An argument ensues between two players and the DM ends up just ghosting us. The fact that there were two groups should have told me this was doomed from the start, but I didn't note anything because it was my first ever time playing and I was excited to play. TLDR, doomed messy game that tried to include too many players, ended up exploding after spoiled player pisses off the party by stealing all of their shit. Once again, a game that is bad in a very, very confusing way. This DM is running two games at once, and he wants to be like Critical Role, but damn it, I don't even know if Matt Mercer himself could do that, and he is a really good dungeon master with years of experience. If this guy is new, then some of the mistakes make sense, but damn, it's still a really confusing mistake. I have no idea what the whole parallel games is about. Just have the group be one group. It's so much easier in so many different ways. Favoritism is an issue that we often see, but man, favoritism towards a plain problem player is definitely going to ruin any D&D game, even games with really strong friendship bonds between all the players. This is a bunch of random people on Discord trying to play D&D together through the DM's weird parallel game rule with an unrelenting murder hobo trying to destroy everything in the process. This is just, like the OP said, a recipe for complete disaster. But hey, uh, look on the bright side. At least this one ended quickly. That's the best we can hope for in some of these RPG horror stories. Alright, and that is it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed it, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of my content, then check out my actual play D&D podcast, Shadow Over Karkonos, featuring Crow's Perch, Den of the Drake, and Nova Tonics. A new episode is coming out this Wednesday, so get caught up before then. Oh, and while you're doing that, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content right as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down to the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment critically murder hobo to let me know you made it to the end of the video. In essence, like, comment, subscribe. I will see you all next time. Farewell.